So it's midday on the 6th of April here in Ventnor on the Isle of Wight. I'm going to head up that way, see how far I can get. Definitely won't be going right up into the top of the downs because I need to get back down but, uh, before a traffic warden gives me a ticket. Because <laughs> of course I've forgotten to pay for parking before I set off on this walk. But I'll take the risk, even though it's a Saturday, so they're very likely to be around today. We shall see. Somebody else coming down the closed road. They're going to have to reverse back up again. You can't get any further. There are very clear closed road signs at the top. <laughs> oh well. Check out the uh, crack in the road. Or in the pavement, I mean. Not looking good. This is Bath Road leading up to the Royal Hotel. Here comes the sun. Might have too many layers because it's really warm. Yeah, this bit of a this crack is definitely getting bigger as well. We only managed to get back up, which is good. There's the Royal Hotel. So I've activated a Strava on my mobile phone so I can record how far I'm walking, how many steps, how many miles, that kind of stuff. And heart rate, I think it monitors heart rate. Don't know, I'm trying to get fit again. Somebody up there is a bit annoyed with her. There's two jackdaws fighting. What a cracking uh, Cracking early afternoon. Definitely weather for a osprey or something to fly in off the sea. Got southerly airflow, so migrant birds are going to be being pushed up from the south, heading this way from Africa. Kind of tailwind uh, should help a few drift across the English Channel. Had a swallow earlier today, which is nice over Ventnor Bay. So I'm going to go and see if I can get up the uh, St Albans steps up to the Chippy Chip Shop on Ocean View Road. But I don't think I can get up at St Albans steps. We'll soon find out because that bit of Gillscliff Road is still closed due to a rockfall we had a couple of months ago. So I don't think I'm going to get beyond these barriers here, but maybe there's still pedestrian access, I doubt it. Uh, yeah, maybe I can get through this way. That's good. This is where the old uh, rock fall occurred. Kind of all fell onto the traffic lights here. And apparently, uh, these, this little bit of cliff face is still unstable and rocks and debris are still coming down. Yeah, you can see some uh, precarious looking rocks up there. 
some splits in the cliff. So St Albans Steps is still open, excellent. I used to love sitting at this bench, but uh, unfortunately these seedling holm oaks have grown up and uh, removed the view that you used to have. Now they're only seedling holm oaks, so removing the holm oaks wouldn't be a problem from a wildlife point of view. So I would just cut the damn things down. Excuse my language. I would cut them down. This is the most obvious part of the Graben sinkhole that's developing. Looking south now, so Ocean View Road is just uh, over those shed roofs where there's a row of housing along Ocean View Road and then the road itself. This Graben has dropped remarkably. Uh, so I remember back in 1995, this was basically level ground and a big sinkhole is forming very slowly developing. <laughs> yeah, not that slowly here. Mm. These are pretty big, these gaps now. Look at that. That's pretty, pretty big gap. Something has to give at some point. So I'm not going to go down Old Chute or the Cut. I'm going to go into Old Chute Field. It's just a, there's another crack over there, which is a, that often reappears, that crack, as far as I can remember. It's when I lived on Ocean View Road. I used to come in here every morning, just sit on the bench on the hill up here. Tell me in the comments below if you've been up through here. And um, yeah, I guess I should celebrate that uh, yesterday I uh, went over a thousand subscribers. Well, I didn't go over because I'm still on a thousand subscribers, but um, yeah, so that's a milestone met. So thank you everybody for subscribing. That's uh, yeah, really, really, really good. Um, so I guess the next target is. <laughs> I don't know, 10,000. So I haven't gained any more subscribers. I'm still sat at a thousand. So very perilous position to be in because it could drop back down to 999 or less for those getting bored with my videos, deciding to unsubscribe. But um, yeah, thank you everybody. And uh, if you've not already subscribed, do so, please, because uh, that sends a message to the algorithms that um, people like seeing the videos.
love to see these cow slips in flower. So down in town, the more common species is primrose. Whereas up here, you get those, but also a lot of cow slips on the uh, open grass. And they're the ones with the tall stem and the flowers on top of the tall stem. Whereas uh, cow slips are close to the ground. Is that right? Have I got them the right way around? <laughs> anyway, these are the ones with the long stalk, as you can see. Tell me in the comments below. Uh, is this primrose or cowslip? It's primrose, isn't it? Of course. Primula vulgaris, I think, is a Latin name. Just opening. So this is my favourite bench. Uh, this would come up here all the time with the dog. Just sit here for hours watching the uh, migrating birds go through. It's a great vantage point, as you can see. Overlooking the town. Lovely bit of uh, chalk grass and just down on this slope. Very rich in wildflowers. Doesn't look like much at this time of year, but uh, come May it will be looking beautiful. There's Ventnor Park, Royal Hotel down there. And Ventnor Haven, the, uh, the harbour. Be nice if we could still see the pier, but that's long gone. Got this way, I think. Looking west now towards Rue Down Nature Reserve and the uh, cemetery, which is on that hill over there below the sun. So this used to be a stile, it's been replaced with a kissing gate, which I seem to remember was done quite a while ago, so not new. This is all National Trust owned. This field used to be managed as a kind of a hay meadow with horses grazing it. Once the hay was cut, um, the National Trust attempted to lay that hedge over there, which means basically cutting halfway through the stems of uh, the shrubs that make up the hedge and laying them down. And in theory, that causes them to re-sprout um, wildly from the cut area and thicken up the hedge, but it basically failed completely and killed the hedge. So there's a lesson there. Hedge laying isn't always the best thing to do to a hedgerow. It was a stunning hedgerow as well before that was done. And now there's basically nothing there. Little shame. But um, I think this grassland is just grazed by cattle occasionally now. It's much better as a hay meadow. I used to see barn owls come up and hunt in here all the time. I'm sure they still do, to be honest. But, uh, you know, it's definitely better as a hay meadow. That said, the National Trust do manage this area of chalk grass and really really well vent the downs and the various components Roxall down and martin down and uh, actually not all of it's owned by the natural trust littleton down just over there coombe bottom st boniface down bond church down luckham down yeah most of it owned by the national trust which is definitely good and of course luckham farm which is also owned by the national trust these badgers have uh, got their set under, I don't think that's a badger, well, maybe badger. Certainly was badgers a few years ago, maybe foxes now, or even rabbits. Looks like badgers to be honest. And we see piles of hay that they've been collecting. There's a bit there. Black cat singing over there, you probably can't hear it because I'm using the uh, microphone, the external microphone rather than the 
phone's microphone. What a lovely evening. You may have noticed a change in the weather and the time of day between the first half of this video and this half. That's because I've videoed, well, I've made this recording on two separate days. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Map there to know how good condition it's in. Luckham and Roxall Downs. The green is owned by the National Trust. Oh no, hang on. The green is open access land. So a bigger area is owned by the National Trust. Um, but not all of it is open to for general access. You can still walk in it, but uh, it's just not mapped as free, free public access. So, uh, yeah, when I was young, this was my go-to area, Coombe Bottom. There's a Ventnor radar station in the distance. It's basically a wonderful uh, chalk vale right on the coast here, opening out its base across Ventnor. And I think one of the reasons why this is so good for migrating birds is that they see the light of Ventnor and they all come down into this habitat because they're attracted in by the lights. They kind of work out that the lights mean somewhere to land. So they all land down, some of them land in the town. These are night time migrants, the ones that are migrating overnight. Um, they see the lights, they come down, some of them land in town, some of them land here. And in spring, they all work their way inland basically because they're in a bit of a rush. So in autumn, they're not in a rush, so much of a rush because they're they're not racing to get back into their breeding territories, whereas in spring, all these migrating birds that are coming up from Africa are racing to get to their breeding territories. So they want to get there as quickly as possible because competition for territories is fierce. So uh, they want to try and get to the very best territory as quickly as possible before somebody else does. So that's why in spring, a lot of the migrants just go through really, really fast. Whereas in autumn, when they're just basically gradually working their way south to escape the first frosts and first chilly weather, they're not in quite such a rush. So they tend to hang around longer in this kind of habitat. But um, because the Isle of Wight is central along the south coast, if you look on a map, we're basically plonked right in the centre of the stretch of south coast between kind of the west country and southeast. Um, because it's right in the centre, it means all the birds that are coming south in the autumn across the UK, we are kind of centrally positioned for all those birds to come and feed here on the Isle of Wight, which is why it's so good for a volume of common migrants. Um, probably one of the best places, if not the best place, for the number of common migrants along the English south coast. And there's a old station road, the industrial estate, which used to be the railway sidings and Ventnor railway station, the main one. And um, if it was up to me, I'd reinstate the railway to there, given the terrible situation with our road infrastructure at the moment. I think there's a strong case for reinstating the railway, but I um, can't imagine the Isle of Wight Council would uh, pursue that with any enthusiasm. This is cracking, this chalk grassland. So what do we mean by chalk grassland? It's basically chalky soils. And it's not just the grasslands per se that's important. It's all the wildflowers that are in the sward. So there are, you know, it's renowned chalk grassland for being one of the richest kind of open, if not the richest open habitats, sunny open habitats in, uh, in the country and chalk chalky soils, there are just so many wildflowers associated with chalky soils, calcicoles, kind of uh, limestone, chalk loving, calcareous plants. So they just cram into these swords, so it's absolutely full of wildflowers and you come back, come here in May time when it begins to approach its peak in terms of the number of species of wildflower that are actually in flower and it's just superb. And May is a brilliant time to come down here to look for butterflies as well. So you've got things like Adonis blue butterfly, which is rare. You only really get it on the chalk grasslands, places like the Isle of Wight and 
through Sussex to South Downs and the South Wessex Downs up in Wiltshire and North Hampshire. So Donis blue butterfly is one of the species of butterflies to come and see. May is a good time to see those early in the morning. And uh, dark green fritillary, which is not a blue butterfly, it's one of the kind of greeny, orangey coloured ones. Um, they live in Coombe Bottom, so they're pretty rare. Um, and the old Galanville fritillaries, which are more associated with the undercliff down at Wheeler's Bay, etc. Um, there's also a few up here, so they gradually, they seem to be gradually spreading onto the chalk grassland. Um, looking for ribwort plantain, which is the Glanville fritillary butterfly caterpillar's food plant. But yeah, just come here in May, June, July and, uh, and August as well. And it's dazzlingly full of wildflowers. Uh, harebells, rock rose, thyme, squinancy wort, those kind of things. Um, burnt tip orchid and pyramidal orchid, bee orchids. It's just wonderful. And that's why I spent, when I was younger, spent an awful long time, lot of time in here. It's definitely not at its peak at this time of year. Still very early spring. But um, equally good is the bit above Leeson Road, the chalk grass on there. What is that? Is that uh, Bond Church Down? I can never remember the name of the different components of downland up here. Um, but that's south facing, so very, very hot in summer. And the hot kind of parched conditions really suit the wildflowers. That's what they really love. There's a very rare species that only occurs in the UK, and that's early gentian. What's that? Gentianella anglica or something? That may be the Latin name, I can't remember. Um, but that's a very rare, tiny little gentian that um, is endemic, which means it only occurs in the UK. It's the only place in the whole world where you can find early gentian. And one of its strongholds is these downlands on the Isle of Wight, these chalk downlands. Bent the Downs being one of the very best places to try to see it. It's so tiny and diminutive. It's still very beautiful because it's a gentian and gentians are very beautiful. So I'm going to cut down this slope. I'm not going to walk up through the coom today, but you can see just how cracking it is. I need to get down to, to have a coffee, <laughs> obviously. So we go down this area down this way. This little copse here is brilliant for rarer migrating birds like yellow-browed warbler in the autumn which is a little species from Asia one of the leaf warblers so same families as chiff chaffs and willow warblers. Uh, Philoscopus leaf warblers um, it's a yellow-browed warbler comes from Southeast Asia and uh, yeah kind of in kind of late September into October. You pick one or two up somewhere in the undercliff and this is one of the favoured spots. Just these sycamores. Very distinctive call. Like that. Nothing like that, but no, absolutely nothing like that. I can't imitate the call at all. So, uh, yeah. So apparently the first swifts were seen in Norfolk today, which is two or three weeks earlier than you might expect them. So these southerlies that come right up from North Africa have really enabled a few migrants to get up here pretty quickly, cross the Mediterranean, the uh, Iberian Peninsula, and arrived up here early, which is good. Hopefully they'll have a good long breeding season. Well, those swifts stay here for a very short period of time. They kind of you know, they're normally heading off again south in July, so they're not here for very long, but uh, if they get here early, it might, uh, well, it may or may not suit them, it depends on how much, or how, what happens with the weather, if it stays nice. I think this coming week is going to be a bit wet and miserable, but we'll see. Let's cross down here. 
try not to break my neck on the slope. The slope up here is really good for migrant thrushes like ring ousel, uh, which is related to blackbird, but um, has an obvious white stripe on its throat or on its belly, really. Not really a stripe, a blob, unlike blackbirds. Um, really an upland species, but uh, they like munching for all the berries that are on these, this slope, this kind of north northwest facing slope of the downs here and uh, yeah come September October time it just fills up with migrating thrushes red wings a few field fairs lots and lots of song thrushes and blackbirds and a few ring oozles in amongst them and it's really good in mid-September um, if the sun catches this area late in the day, if it's a sunny kind of mid-September day, then all the migrating leaf warblers, the philoscopus warblers, chiff chaffs and willow warblers mainly, they all concentrate in these shrubs here and feed. Last thing during the day when the sun just hits this edge, the sun obviously sets over in that direction, so before it dips down below, uh, the golf course and Rue Down, the steep hill down, the sun kind of lights up this section and warms it up. And that's why all the birds are there, because all the insects become very active and all the birds are feeding on those insects. All I can hear at the moment are great tits, wrens, robins. don't know if you can hear any of those, because I'm jabbering on too much and the microphone probably isn't picking them up. Can't see the entrance to the railway tunnel from here. Can't remember if you can a little way along, you might be able to. As there's no leaves on the trees to speak of. Let's have a look up here. They are beginning to leaf up though, the blackthorns are leafing up. Got flowers and leaves on them now. Yeah, can't see the tunnel entrance down there. Ah uh, well, oh, it's a bit muddy up along here. I've worn completely the wrong footwear for this. This kind of open shrubby habitat is really, really important. I've actually written a book about that, the link to which is in the description below. <laughs> A book about shrubby habitat and grassy shrubby habitat, this kind of habitat, and how important it is for wildlife. Sort of habitat that's very easy for farmers to create, and there's a lot of enthusiasm within the farming community for creating shrubby grassland habitat. So, uh, there's mosses and lichens. On, uh, this is an old hawthorn by the looks of it. It's going to end up being a very long video, for which I uh, apologise profusely. <laughs> it's going to be a very muddy video as well if I can't work out a way of getting through here without getting swamped. Let's battle through the way the goats have gone. They know what they're doing. Ouch. Lots of wild rose. Most of the thorns of which are now in my leg. Marvellous. 
So I will do a video going up there soon, but it's very, very steep. I don't have any energy. So instead, I'm going to go down here and head back into Ventnor. It's Sunday, so I can't go into co-op, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to have to ferret around in the car, see if I've got any food. I'm going to take the uh, external microphone off just so you can hear if there's any bird song. There's a great here, it's gone. It's a bit more distant now, but uh, I think I'm going to leave the microphone on because I think the wind has dropped off. There's that great here. So not living on Ocean View Road anymore has definitely changed my behaviour. I used to do this at least once a day. So I used to be a river restoration project manager on the Isle of Wight, which meant I worked from home a lot and uh, meant I could get out a lot more. Um, but uh, more recently I moved into the van and um, I do, I've been doing a lot less walking but now I've started to walk a lot more again, so hence these kind of videos and yeah, trying to get back to being a bit fitter. This building here used to be the Terminus pub used to like that pub. Alright, the breeze has gone up a bit, so uh, I probably won't say very much and I'll probably turn the volume down quite a lot on the video. don't think I'm going to put the microphone back on because there's a little bit of bird song you might be able to hear. What road is this? Grove Road I think. Apologise for all the bobbing up and down I'm doing. Once I can afford a gimbal, I'll buy one and that'll cut out a lot of this bobbing up and down. I was known as Bob at school, that's one of my names, because uh, I used to bob up and down a lot.
Do look lovely in the sun, the old uh, jack door. Cut down Tulse Hill, I think. Don't normally record in town because I uh, don't want to record too many people, but um, I'll cut off now and start recording again when I get down to the bay. But there's the Blenheim anyway, before I switch off. Coming down into the bay again now, put the microphone back on because the wind has got up a bit since, since I started the walk. It's going to be another beautiful evening down here. Yep, certainly breezy around here. Don't know if you can hear it. 